Okay, so we're gonna look at some of the arteries of the head here, with the first one being the common carotid. So the common carotid is that artery that runs through the carotid sheath up towards the head. At this area, where the thyroid gland is, we're going to see the cranial thyroid artery leaving the ventral aspect of the common carotid. The common carotid then continues cranially until we get to this point. Here we see a fairly large artery coming off and at the base of that large artery we see a little dilatation in the vessel. The artery is the internal carotid artery and the dilatation at its base is going to be the carotid sinus. It's at this point where the internal carotid leaves that the common carotid becomes the external carotid artery. One of the first branches of your external carotid artery is actually going to be traveling very close but just lateral to the internal carotid and that is going to be the occipital artery. So the occipital artery travels dorsally and kind of laterally to the internal carotid. Around the same area we see another artery leaving the ventral aspect of the external carotid and coming down here towards the larynx, again running with a nerve. And again that is the cranial laryngeal artery accompanied by the cranial laryngeal nerve. As we continue rostrally here, we will see a large artery coming off the ventral aspect of the external carotid and coming down towards the tongue. That is going to be the lingual artery and it's going to be traveling along with a very large nerve which is the hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve carries motor innervation to all of the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the tongue again and it travels with the lingual artery. As we continue rostrally up the external carotid, the next artery we will see will be this artery right here. Or this artery right here which is traveling between the digastricus and the masseter muscle which in that in this case this artery is going to be the facial artery. In this cadaver we see the lingual artery here and the facial artery here. As we continue rostrally, the next branch we will get will be going towards the caudal aspect of the ear and that's going to be the caudal auricular artery. Finally, the terminal branch of the external carotid is going to be this artery that moves towards the rostral aspect of the ear. That's going to be the superficial temporal artery. Now after the superficial temporal artery comes off, the external carotid becomes the maxillary artery. Here we see the maxillary artery right after it's branching from the superficial temporal. And the first branch from the maxillary artery is this branch here that has been cut but you can actually see the remainder of it going down into the mandible. So it's traveling ventrally from the maxillary artery into the mandible and that's going to be the inferior alveolar artery. The next artery has been cut in this section. and we can see it present here. Here we can see the inferior alveolar just for to kind of give you a perspective where we're at. We see the inferior alveolar coming off the maxillary. Next we have this very large artery with quite a network of little arteries coming off of it. This artery is moving dorsally towards where the temporalis muscle is. This is going to be the caudal deep temporal artery. After that artery comes off, the maxillary artery actually continues in towards the skull. It will go into the caudal alar foramen, move through the alar canal, and exit the rostral alar foramen 
and it's usually at that point that it exits the rostral alar foramen, another very large artery will come off and go up towards and into the orbit. That is going to be the external ophthalmic artery to supply all of these vessels to the eye in periorbita. The next branch we will see after the external ophthalmic is going to be a branch that is coming down towards the cheek. We can see that branch right here. So this artery coming down towards the cheek is going to be the buccal artery. As we continue rostrally, the maxillary will then give off a very small branch that actually doesn't go into any foramen of the skull. It runs around the caudal aspect to supply the soft palate. That's going to be the minor palatine artery. At this point, we can see the termination of the maxillary artery as it terminates into the descending palatine artery, which is going ventrally, and the infraorbital artery, which is moving dorsally. Here we can see another view showing the buccal artery moving down just towards that zygomatic salivary gland. That zygomatic salivary gland lives just medial to the zygomatic arch. So if we move that, now we can see this beautiful buccal artery traveling towards the cheek. If we push that zygomatic salivary gland out of the way, now we can see the minor palatine artery coming off. We can also see the infraorbital artery going dorsally and the descending palatine artery going ventrally. It's at this point that it's quite difficult to find where the descending palatine splits into the major palatine and the sphenopalatine. It happens very deep underneath here and none of these cadavers have a great example of this. If you have questions over that, please come find me.